Peak height velocity is the period of maximal growth during the adolescent growth spur, which typically occurs between the ages of 10 to 12 in girls and 12 to 14 in boys. This period can result in increases in stature of approximately 8 cm per year in girls and 10 cm per year in boys. These rapid gains in limb length can lead to a decrease in motor control, known as adolescent awkwardness, as individuals need to learn to move with longer limbs. Also, intensive sport-specific training during this period can increase the risk of injury. As a result, neuromuscular training is recommended for youth athletes in order to develop their fundamental movement skills. Neuromuscular training is an umbrella term for a program that offers a range of exercises that targets muscular strength, mobility, balance and impulsive movements to get from A to B. Whereas, fundamental movement skills are broadly defined as movement patterns that involve two or more body segments. Therefore, fundamental movement skills relate to motor control and represent the central nervous system's ability to orchestrate coordinated and purposeful movement in relation to the body's interaction with its environment. In the meta-analysis, titled New Muscular Training and Motor Control in Youth Athletes, by Mark David Williams and colleagues, aim to analyse the relevant literature to determine the effects of body weight only, new muscular training programs on motor control of movement among youth athletes. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will provide a summary of their findings and recommendations. Firstly, in terms of Williams and colleagues' selection criteria, only new muscular training programs using body weight exercises lasting up to 16 weeks, completed by both male and females with a mean age of 8 to 18 years who were engaged in organised sports, were included. 16 weeks was selected as a cut-off point to reduce the likelihood of any influence from individual maturational changes. Studies were only included if they compared the neuromuscular training programme to a control group, i.e. they continued their normal sports practice. To determine the effectiveness of neuromuscular training programmes, motor control movement tasks involving the lower limb against a desirable criterion needed to have been reported. In the end, nine studies met the criteria and were included in their analysis. Of those nine studies, the new muscular training programmes involved a range of exercises, including plyometrics, lower limb and trunk strength, balance and running-based exercises. Three out of the nine studies used the FIFA 11 Plus warm-up programme, while five studies implemented something very similar that included various forms of unilateral lower limb balance and multidirectional jumping based exercises. However, only three studies included the Nordic hamstring curl, and one study used the FIFA 11 Plus for kids, which was specifically aimed at children below 14 years of age to develop their general balance and coordination. Across all new muscular training programmes, prescribed sets for each exercise range from one to three. However, depending upon the exercise type, Prescriptions of repetitions, distances and durations differed between programmes. The results from Williams and colleagues' analysis reveal neuromuscular training programmes are effective in improving motor control on tasks requiring dynamic balance and effective movement strategies, with greater improvements achieved among less proficient individuals and less mature individuals, i.e. lighter, shorter and chronologically younger youth athletes. These findings may relate to increased neuron plasticity occurring in pre-adolescence, representing a golden period for motor learning. Another interesting finding was neuromuscular training programmes were more effective among males than females. This may relate to differences in female maturation processes, including decreased neuromuscular control and associated imbalances in muscle strength and activation patterns. For example, following peak height velocity, Females typically display decreased knee stability while at the same time experiencing increases in joint torque loads. Therefore, new muscular training programmes should gradually become more individualised in their designs in order to account for sex differences around peak height velocity. Regarding general recommendations, to improve motor control in youth athletes, new muscular training based warm ups performed two to three times per week across a time frame of more than eight weeks is recommended. It appears that generic programmes, such as the FIFA 11 Plus, can provide adequate stimulus. 
However, for older and larger youth athletes, a more individually tailored exercise prescription and training volume is recommended. The key take-home message is that exercises to enhance motor control should be a priority during pre-adolescence. And that concludes this presentation. I recommend you check out the full article. The link is in the description. Thanks for listening, folks. See you next time.